Welcome to study session 9, the group situation, part 2. Introduction. In this second part of group situation, you will be introduced to the process of group interaction, characteristics of groups used as helping techniques, and the meaning of brainstorming. In discussing these common characteristics, we focus on what goes on in the group the dynamic interchanges, the group cohesiveness, the contributions of members, personal frankness, and so on. Learning outcomes. At the end of this study session, you should be able to 1. Explain the process of group interaction. 2. List characteristics of groups used as helping techniques. 3. Explain the meaning of brainstorming. Group interaction. What goes on in different kinds of groups is determined by the purpose of the group. That is, what brought the members of each group to situation together. For instance, each member in the group has come to his or her group because of one or more of the following reasons. One, dissatisfaction at some level or in some degree with one's present life or with one small part of it which may be severe or slight. 2. Seeking relief from severe mental illness or maladjustment problems. 3. Seeking information about career and educational guidance. 4. Seeking help with some family difficulty. 5. Seeking to ease the transition from one stage of life to another. 6. Wishing to extend the range of certain professional skills. However, whatever new satisfaction each member is seeking through group membership, they all have one thing in common. Each of them is concerned with relationship between people. It is in this area of interaction with group members that the dissatisfaction are expressed. It is also through this group membership and in interactions that the remedies are being sought. Thus, human problems such as mental illness and personal problems may be relieved and resolved through group activities. Characteristics of groups used as helping techniques. Interpersonal relationship. Much of the happiness and success one enjoys depends so much on the quality of the relationship one makes with other people. Through this relationship, one can either meet or fail to meet most of the basic needs, depending on the quality of the relationship. Every relationship between two people is a two-way process to which both contribute and any professional practice concerned with human beings such as guidance and counseling, nursing, medicine, etc., require from the workers a deep understanding of his own behavior as well as the behavior of others in order to be able to establish a good and congenial human relationship. In this way, working with people differs from dealing with inanimate objects which alone can be objective. Thus, members of different kinds of groups with their different motivations and different degrees of commitment are seeking to improve the quality of the relationship which they make with other people. They also seek to learn to recognize the contribution they themselves make to every personal relationship in which they are involved and also to take responsibility for the contribution. To this end, the group members are prepared in whatever group they have joined to expose themselves to new situations which contain the possibility of personal change. Thus, the aims of all groups include the promotion of a change in their individual members. This change is not influenced by external factors, nor is it a change in some determined direction. The members of the group are not converted nor indoctrinated. Also, members are not instructed towards this change. The agent of change is in participation in group itself and its processes. 
operating under exceptional and disciplined conditions. Thus, every human encounter and relationships in groups bring about change in potentialities and improvement in growth and development. Personal frankness. In a group situation, the frankness of one person is a challenge to the concealment of everyone else. As a matter of fact, those who speak plainly about their own shortcomings expose others more than themselves. However, it is very hard for many people to openly acknowledge a need. This is due to the fear that if the need is known, it may be ignored. And if this happens, the burden will be doubled. It is also rather hard to acknowledge ignorance and incompetence because human beings fear contempt and loss of esteem. There is also fear that others may take advantage of any weakness that is revealed. This fear of insecurity makes people assume positions that are hard to relinquish and it does change unlikely. However, in helping relationships, group members should be encouraged to expose themselves to the possibility of change and also to abandon some part of their defenses. They should also be encouraged to relinquish some part of their controls to reveal more of their weaknesses and to be more honest, both with themselves and with others. Some of the conventions of social intercourse with which they would normally project themselves must be abandoned. Group cohesiveness. Cohesiveness is generally regarded as characteristics of the group in which the forces acting on the members to remain in the group are greater than the total forces acting on them to leave it. Some groups seem to possess a certain atmosphere of closeness or commonness of purpose that is lacking in other groups. Progressive groups are collectives in which interpersonal attraction or the desire for mutual association is high. Group cohesiveness, therefore, emphasizes the dynamic nature of the relationship among the members. Factors that influence group cohesiveness can be grouped into two. One, the group members are attractive in that individuals enjoy interacting with them, receiving their support on some issue or issues, or in general, wishes to enter into some kind of exchange relationship with one or more of them. Two, the goals or exterior tasks confronting the group are consistent with those of the individual members and can best be handled by group action. Effect of cohesiveness on group performance. Since cohesive groups are composed of persons motivated to be together, we would expect group performance to benefit from cohesiveness through general motivation alone. Cohesive group possesses the advantages of mutual availability of the members. That is, the willingness to interact has the potential advantage of making group resources available to a degree that the less cohesive groups may not enjoy. Cohesiveness also fosters uniformity of responses to achieve group goals and objectives. However, sometimes the pleasures derived from interaction in coercive groups exceeds the task-specific motivation. Thus, greater energy is devoted to interpersonal relations than to overcoming the task obstacles. Hence, performance suffers. Intergroup competition generally tends to increase cohesiveness within a group while intra-group competition tends to decrease it. Group commitment. Interactions of the members of the group itself represent various kinds of commitment to each other. Each member responds to another member in a manner different from that of anyone else. In any group situation, each member chooses among the others those with whom he will do and will not do certain things. His pattern of choices usually will be different from the choices made by other members. The interpersonal interactions that are apparent 
in any group are the result of a type of decision or commitment of the individual members with relation to each other. True full commitment of a group to a common action, a common objective, or a common attitude is practically impossible in a complete sense because each one of the group members sees the world differently. However, a group may reach a joint commitment at a certain level of abstraction. The more abstract the proposition under consideration, the greater the possibilities of joint agreement. The more concrete the proposition under consideration, the less opportunity for full agreement. Group decision making. Group decision making is more complex and more involving than the intrapersonal and interpersonal decision making. A group decision is a collection of common individual commitment. It involves both intrapersonal and interpersonal decisions. When several group members agree to perform a common act or accept a common anticipation of action through group discussion, they are making a group decision. A unanimous or consensus decision occurs when all members of a group make the same commitment and proceed to perform similar behavior. However, majority decisions do not represent or signify total group commitment in any given matter. In many groups, for instance, there are always some people who are not committed to any action that the majority of the group will follow. But when unanimous or consensus procedure is used, no decision or commitment is made that is not followed by everyone in the group. Both types of group commitment have values and weaknesses, depending on the demands of a given situation. Problem solving in group. Problem solving is a system of arranging and organizing decisions so that they will have the greatest usefulness or value. Some of the problem-solving techniques employed by groups are 1. Group discussion 2. Assignment of roles 3. Role playing 4. Prescribed games Refer to lecture 8 One other technique that might be employed for group problem-solving is brainstorming. Brainstorming What do you understand by the term brainstorming? Brainstorming is a technique of simulating the generation of idea and facilitating the expression. Brainstorming, as discovered by Alex Osborne, is a group creativity training method which operates under certain basic rules that gives necessary freedom for the generation of original ideas. It usually involves cooperative thinking by groups and is usually directed to the solution of specific problems. The assumption is that if there is a free flow of ideas within a group of low population density, one is likely to come out with some of the ideas that will serve as solutions to the problem. The rules of brainstorming are too numerous. Only very few examples will be cited here. One, Criticisms are not allowed, that is, members are not allowed to criticize an individual member's contribution or idea. Two, free willing of idea is desirable. Three, assemble as many ideas as available within the group because quantity ideas bring quality. Four, Combination of ideas serve as building blocks to new ideas and so on. Brainstorming is best used in group discussion. Summary of study session. In this study session, you have learned that 1. Human beings are group oriented. People are meant to complement, assist and enjoy each other. 2. Groups are natural means for those processes to occur. People also seek to meet most of their basic personal social needs through groups, including the need to know and grow mentally. Fourth, 
Groups provide most natural and expeditious means to learn. Consequently, groups are most influential in how the individuals grow, learn, develop behavior patterns, coping styles, values, career potentialities, and adjustment techniques. All these are possible due to characteristics possessed by groups. We have come to the end of study session 9. Thanks for listening.